Please keep in mind December the 19th is our Christmas cantata, so please put that on your calendar. <coughs> that is at 6 p.m. Uh, the title of the cantata is The Sun is Given, and so please uh, plan on being here. It's going to be a great time, great message of the birth of Christ, and a great message of salvation. It's a good opportunity and a great opportunity to invite someone out uh, who may, may not ordinarily come to church, but they'll come during Christmas time. They'll have an opportunity to hear the gospel message and... Uh, you know, just pray that they would accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. What a great gift that would be at Christmas time, would it not? So, um, all right, so we're going to take some testimony. If you have a testimony, just please raise your hand. Um, we'll try and get as many of them as we can. If you have a favorite hymn, please let us know what your favorite hymn is first, and then uh, you can give your testimony as we give piano players and uh, Jack in the back of time to pull everything up so we have the words on the screen. So let's start. Anybody on this side have a testimony of God's goodness? Anybody want to start? Yes, sir. Yes, first of all, I uh, thank the Lord for uh, my salvation. Amen. And also for my wife. I've been married for 56 years. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm going great. I feel like it just happened. Amen. And uh, thank the Lord for the wonderful family I had. My children turned out real well. Amen. Uh, of course, her bringing them up had a lot to do with it. <laughs> and also, my walk with the Lord and her walk with the Lord. Amen. And uh, her, uh, the Lord bringing us here mm. and meeting a lot of the wonderful people that are here, the godly folks. Amen. And we're so very grateful. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Do you have a favorite hymn you want to sing? Oh, they're all great. I just, it's hard to even think one, to tell you the truth. Okay, that's fine. I appreciate it. Well, why, I'll tell you what, why don't we sing Amazing Grace 187? Amazing Grace. Uh, which just really speaks of just God's wonderful grace to us and uh, just God's amazing grace in saving us when we do not deserve it. And uh, we're thankful for that. So 187.
thank God for, you know, this past year, my wife and I have been, we've been saved, of course, but uh, saved also from the COVID. And that's the one thing that I'm really grateful for. My, my son-in-law, my daughter, my grandchildren, uh, nobody in my family had gotten this uh, disease. And so we're really grateful for that. Um, by the way, my hymn is Day by Day, 529. 529. So I just want to thank God for, you know, all that he's done for me and my family. Uh, most precious gift of all is salvation, though. And I Amen. appreciate that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Day by day, 529. Say the first and the last.
I just appreciate the fact that I ended up committing myself to Jesus. And then I ended up talking. It's like almost have uh, I talk with people about two things in life. My air fry love it and Jesus Christ. <laughs> so it's one of those things that uh, you know uh, when you went you would say that. It's almost hard to not understand why no one else is, you know, or people don't want to and then send them into your life. That's awesome. That's I just awesome. want to say, you know, thank you, God. Thank you for when people came back on Sunday go back and uh and shook hands when we were standing online over there. That's one of the things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, the, the, when, when Paul asked for those that thorn to be removed, God said, my grace is sufficient for the end. And no matter what situations we're dealing with, God always gives us the grace to keep pressing on for him. Amen. And that's awesome. Do you have a favorite hymn, Tony, that you wanted to sing? Uh, no, it would be a social distortion song. I'm doing, I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> um, let's see. How about 186? And can it be? Isn't that something when the Lord, when you think about who we were, 186 and can it be? When we think about where we were and where we, how, you know, I mean, listen, we were all on our way to hell. And God reached down out of love and pulled us out. And can it be amazing love? How can it be? Jesus. Wonderful grace of Jesus, 814. Basically the words are my testimony, wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. Mm. That, that says it all right yeah. there. You know, isn't it, when, 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 when we say Jesus paid it all, you know, that great hymn, he paid everything. Amen. Like, we don't have to do nothing, just accept him. Just like, you know, Tony said, hey, I knelt down, he asked God to, he asked Christ to forgive him, and he forgives. Why? Because of his wonderful grace. Let's say the first and last.
685, 685, I've got a mansion. That's a great song. Amen. 
your right. Testimony, yes, Pastor Anthony. Uh, it is page 69, Oh How I Love Jesus. And I guess my testimony is it's just every day I find myself singing this song and just no other really way to express it, all the blessing that God's given us, whether it's a good day or a bad day, I just realize that I am so blessed the fact that Jesus loves me, hey. but even better than that is we get to love him back and Amen. have a relationship with him. That's awesome. Yep. Oh, how I love Jesus. We'll sing first, second, and last. Thank you. 
some water, but that's a joke this one up. Four oh seven, all the way my savior leads me. Four oh seven, all the way my savior leads me. Do you have a testimony, Tom? My testimony is that I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. And I, I I go each day uh, trying to do the best for my Lord, not me, mm -hmm. because I fumble. And um, things aren't great. I don't expect them to be great. But when you said that song, is, is one that always grabs my heart. Because I say, when is it going to be well, Lord? And he says, when I say so. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I <coughs> praise him, I give him all the glory. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, really, there isn't much more to say. You know, God is so good to us. And sometimes, you know, when, when you know when you're in prayer, sometimes, or when you're reading the scriptures and God is, is speaking to your heart, sometimes you're just left speechless. And that's okay, because you know, God is still working in our hearts, He's talking to us, and sometimes there's not even words to put to how good God has been to us. But He's been so good. saying, really just saying that God uses all things in our life for his glory, the yeah. trials in our life. The man who wrote this hymn, Eugene Bartlett, wrote this. It's a great story. If you've never read it, you should read it. The man who wrote this wrote this after he had a devastating stroke in his life. And imagine having a devastating stroke like that and writing a song, Victory in Jesus. <laughs> Only by the grace of God can you do something like that. But let's sing the first and the last <laughs>
All right, let's open our Bibles this evening. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. As you're turning there, I was just thinking as we were singing that song, um, I haven't thought about this in a few years, but hang on, let me, my door to turn this on. Am I good? Am I good? No? All right, there we go. There we go. How's that? As we were singing that song, I remember when we first got saved and the church that we got saved out of, and small church, maybe 60 or 70 people, um, and most of the music was played with the guitar. And you know, we had just gotten saved, so we were learning everything was new to us. You know, the music was new, the church was new. And one of the songs they sang just about every week, was it not? It was Victory in Jesus. And I, and I thought I, I thought to myself, hey, what a great song, what a great song. And after about the fourth week, I thought, aren't there any other songs they sing? <laughs> but you know what? What a great song. And now I realize as time went on, why? Because, listen, we do have victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, and it talks about, you know, the angels singing in the old redemption story. What a day that's going to be when we see our Savior face to face. Well, it's going to be a great day. I love that hymn. It just, you know, it's, isn't it funny how different hymns that we sing in our life bring us back to a, spe a special place? A special place that God, you know, did something in our life or changed our life or just turned our eternal destination around. Amen? Right. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. We're going to read through these five verses and then really quickly this evening go through this. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for this time. Thank you for the word of God. I do pray, Lord, that you would bless the reading and the preaching of the word tonight. Pray that you would speak to us in a very powerful way in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I do promise to be brief. I know what you're thinking. I've heard that before. So have I. All right. We'll go quick. Thanksgiving is a time, as we know, okay, obviously, to give thanks. But I'm going to challenge you this evening, okay, that we need to have <coughs> an attitude and a spirit of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude every day of the year. Amen. I think sometimes we set aside a couple of days each year. We're thankful. But you know what? We should be thankful every day. Amen. Gratitude and praise in our lives will provide more blessings in our life and joy in our heart than just about anything else in this world. You know that? You say, well, that's ridiculous. No, it isn't. Because when we, and you're going to see it in a minute, when we have a spirit of praise and thanksgiving, <coughs> man, it, it all those negative thoughts, all those things that are circumstances of life, it doesn't matter. Because we can be thankful. You know, when things are going bad, when we have one of those days, and we all have those days. I, I was just, I was laughing with Jack would be right before church. I had to go back. I said, what hymn? Did I put the hymn up there for tonight? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, count your blessings. I said, oh, good. I told him, I said, you know, it's when you have like, a few days off, and you know, we have the next few days off, and, and I had, I started those days off about five hours ago, so you know when you get ready to go on vacation from work, and you get to about like noon at work, and you're thinking, oh, I'm done, and the next five hours, it's just like an endless, you're like, just get me there, just get me there, you know, and that's kind of how I felt my brain had shut down, so I couldn't remember if I did it, but you know what, when we have those days where it just seems like everything is going against us, if we take the time at that moment and just thank and praise God, it doesn't have to be for that particular situation, although we should, because every situation is ordained and, and God knows about it. But if we just find something to be thankful for, you know what it does? It drowns out those circumstances. It puts those circumstances in. It really makes them sometimes seem insignificant. Because a lot of times, I find in my own life that the things I worry the most about and the things that I agonize the most about are really, when I look back, I was like, boy, that was silly. God was in control the whole time. What did I have to worry about? And I believe that a spirit of praise and gratitude really can just put out that fire of disappointment and discouragement in our lives. A.W. Tozer said, Gratitude is an offering precious in the sight of God. And it is one that the poorest of us can make and be not poorer, but richer for having made it. 
we can offer a spirit of gratitude and praise to our God. We should always offer a spirit of gratitude and praise to our God. Do we remember to thank God throughout the year? Now listen, I know when, when we come, you know, come Thursday and tomorrow and the next day, you know, we're going to be, be, we're going to be thankful for a lot of things. But let's not forget the most important thing to be thankful for. Amen. We have a God in heaven who loves us. We have a God in heaven who sent his son to die for us. We have a God who keeps us, sustains us, watches over us, provides for us, loves us, in spite of us. And let's not forget to thank him. Because everything that we have comes from the hand of God. We must have a heart of praise, worship, and thanksgiving to God all the time. All the time. And sometimes it's hard. You know, when it seems like the world is crumbling around you, it's very hard sometimes to have a spirit of praise and thanksgiving. But I believe that's the time when we most need to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Say, that, that's crazy. We just heard that testimony from Daniel about that man that wrote that hymn, Victory in Jesus, during a time, a difficult time in his life. And he was able to rejoice and give God glory in his life. We sang that, that hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Most of you know the story of the man, Horatio Spafford, who, who wrote the words to that at an absolute tragic time in his life. And he was able to sing still that it was well with his soul. And you know what? When we do things like that, God gets all the glory for it. Amen. So let's look at three aspects of giving praise and thanksgiving very quickly this evening from Psalm number 100. The first thing is the direction of our praise. In verse number one, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Our praise and our thanksgiving must always be directed towards God. You say, well, what about if your neighbor helps you? Well, you're thank be thankful to your neighbor. But understand that, you know, God uses people to help us. Amen. Sometimes we think, well, that's a coincidence. No, it's not. There are no coincidences for the Christian. Uh -huh. God is in control of every situation. And when we realize that God is sovereign and God is in control, we realize that everything comes from the hand of God. So all our praise needs to be directed to God. Everything needs to be directed to God. In verse number three, know ye that the Lord, he is God. We must never forget who God is. You know, I find myself so busy in life sometimes that I forget. I forget. I, I kind of have control of my own life. I got my lists and my notes and my post-its and, you know, I got calendar of things coming up reminding me I got to do this, I got to do that, I got... Sometimes we need to take a step back, take a breath, and say, oh, hold on. It's good to be organized. It's good to have plans. But let's not leave God out of our plans. Let's remember God is in control of all things. We, the direction of our praise needs to be towards God. Let it right, because we praise God as our creator. In verse number three, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. The world today doesn't want to acknowledge God as creator. They would rather believe that we all just came to be out of some massive, uncoordinated, disorganized explosion. And here we are. I believe it takes a whole lot more faith to believe that than if there's a God who in heaven and loves it, to tell you that. We praise God as our creator. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, let us make man in our image. You know how, do you realize how powerful of a phrase that is? We are created in the image of Almighty God. We are created in His image. You know, people, I, I, you know, we've had this discussion, I'm sure Pastor Anthony's had it with the teens in our school and, and probably even in youth group, where, where they'll, they'll people will say, well, if we're created in the image of God, why is there evil? Is God evil? And you say, well, that's a terrible question. Well, that's actually a good question for somebody who doesn't know to ask. And I heard it put this way, and I think this is a great explanation of it. We are created in the image of God, but because of our sin, the image of God has been darkened in our life. Do you know what evil is? This is how I heard it explained. This is not me, but this is a great explanation. Evil is the absence of good. Amen. You know why there's evil? Because we are not living as we should in the image of God. We're living in our sin. And so... We need to praise God because we're created in his image. People say like, well, you know, they want to argue with you about, well, how do you know what to do? How do you know to do right? Or do right? You know, every one of us knows inherently 
there, there's that little, you know, that little voice in each and every one of us that knows that there's that, that this world didn't come to exist. Now I'm not talking about the Christian, I'm talking about others. It didn't just come to exist out of some explosion. But it's a lot easier to live in sin if you don't believe there's a God. Right. Because when you start to say, well, maybe there is a God in heaven, and if there is a God in heaven, and he is almighty God, and he is all perfect, and he is true and righteous and holy and just, then I can't keep doing the things I'm doing. So I can't I can't accept that. But there is a God in heaven who is our creator. And he created us for a purpose. He created us in his image to bring glory to him. And our lives need to demonstrate the love of Jesus in our hearts so that everything we do and everything we say brings glory to him. So we need to direct our praise to God as our creator. Letter B, we need to direct our praise to God as our savior. Over in Psalm 95, verse number one, oh, come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Our salvation Salvation. Let me, let me take that back. Our salvation and salvation is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. There is no other way. There is no other means. Um, I'm not intolerant. I'm not unloving. As a matter of fact, because of the love of Christ, we are commanded and desire to share that message with others. It is the love of Christ that motivates us to tell others about it. It isn't an unloving spirit. It's the exact opposite. It's because of the love of Christ, because we understand what Jesus did for us and what somebody did when they told me and they told you that motivates us to tell others. You know, I appreciate Brother Tony's testimony. Listen, you, you can't help it. When you're saved and you know what Jesus did for you, you can't help it but live it. You can't, you can't shut up. You're saying, that's your problem. Yeah, it is. Listen. We want to praise him as our Savior. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. And later on the verse, it says, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We need to direct our praise and our worship and our adoration and our thanksgiving to God because he's our Savior. Amen. Without him, we have no hope. We have no hope, but in Christ we have hope. You know, the Lord testified, he's the solid rock, and he is. He's unmovable, he's unchangeable, he's unwavering, and he's always there when you need him. By the way, he's always there, period. Always leading, always guiding. We praise him as God, as creator, as savior. We praise God as our provider. You know, I mentioned before that, you know, we're going to be thankful for a lot of things, and, you know, Different people, we have different, you know, different people have different traditions. And sometimes people sit around the table and they'll go around the table and everybody will be some, say there's something they're thankful for. Thankful for my family, and thank, you know, things like that. That's, that's a good thing to do. But let, let me challenge you. As if you do something like that, or if you just take time yourself and just take some time to be thankful to God for all the things that you have, let's remember that every one of those things that you're thankful for came from God. Amen. We must never forget that. Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is from God. Every good and perfect gift coming from who? From the Father. James 1.17, I'm paraphrasing. Everything comes from Him. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 12 through 16 talk about the same thing. Listen. Everything that we have, everything we have to be thankful for, everything in our life comes from the hand of God. Now, God uses people to be a blessing to others. God uses us to bless others, and that, I think that's, that's right. But let's not forget that it came from the hand of God. So the direction of our praise is to the Lord God. Number two, the attitude of thanksgiving. Back in Psalm 100, back in Psalm 100, <clears throat> what's the attitude of thanksgiving? Verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. What's the attitude of thanksgiving? Letter A, thanksgiving requires a spirit of humility. You know, it's very hard to be thankful 
when we're filled with pride. Because when we're filled with pride, who do we believe is doing all the work in our life? But when we humble ourselves and realize, I can do nothing apart from God, and you humble yourself before the Lord, then you realize, man, I can't take this step if God doesn't allow me to take it. We can't take the next breath if Amen. God doesn't permit us to take that breath. And, and you know, sometimes I, I think, you know, unknowingly, but I think unknowingly sometimes we live almost kind of entitled like to the next day. Well, I can't wait till tomorrow. We just kind of assume tomorrow's gonna be there. And listen, I, I, I'm hope, I hope I'm here tomorrow. Nobody looks forward to that moment to, of dying. But the reality of it is, every day that we have is a gift from God. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because it comes from the hand of God. We can't serve in a spirit of pride. It's to serve the Lord with gladness. The word serve in and of itself is, is, is kind of, the connotation is that you need humility. You, know, you want to be a servant? That requires you to humble yourself. It means you're putting yourself under the authority of somebody else. In this case, God. We must understand that we are his children. And as his children, we must follow the leading of the Father. But sometimes we just kind of, again, we have our own plans. And I, I'm, believe me when I tell you, I'm so guilty of this. And I have to stop every once in a while and say, okay, take a deep breath, back up. Lord, what do you want me to do? Now that I've made all these plans, Lord, what do you want me to do? It would be nice if I remembered once in a while, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then I'll write down the plan. Unfortunately, I don't always do that. I get these great ideas. Oh, this is great. This is great. Yeah, God's going to bless us. Oh, God. You... And then I stop and I'm like, well, how about a minute of prayer? And say, Lord, is, is this from you or is this just my flesh finding an easy way out? We need to have a spirit of humility. Thanksgiving requires that. Thanksgiving, having a spirit of thanksgiving requires a proper perspective. There was a woman by the name of Eunice Sanborn. Back in 2010, in July of 2010, she celebrated her 114th birthday. Boom. At that time, uh, she was the oldest living person in the world. And she celebrated her 114th birthday at her church. Praise the Lord for that. Man. She celebrated it at her church. And she gave this testimony. She said that she loved everything about her life. And she said this, and I quote, and she has no complaints. I thought, uh, let me tell you something. If there's somebody who, somebody who's lived 114 years has occasion for complaints, it would be her. And she said, I have no complaints. You know, sometimes we need to have the right perspective when it comes to Thanksgiving. That song we sang tonight, Count of Blessings, when you think of others with their land and gold, you know, that's the problem. We look at others with their land and gold, and we start becoming discouraged because, Lord, why don't I have that? I serve you with gladness, Lord. Look at how happy I am today. Why can't I have land and gold? Why can't I have a green lawn like the guy next door? Why can't I have fill in the blank? And what happens is we become discontent with what God has blessed us with. And when we become discontented, discontentment and thanksgiving cannot coexist. So we need to have the right perspective. Sometimes, guess what? We focus on the here and now. What do I mean by that? It, as I mentioned before, sometimes we have those days, those weeks, those months where it seems like every day I wake up, something else goes wrong. Um, whether it's, you know, the car, this, that, the other thing, whatever it is, an appliance, brakes, washing machine, refrigerator, you name it. And it, sometimes, doesn't it seem like it always happens at the same time? And sometimes we focus on that right there and then. And we fail to realize it. And Brother Cranford said this on Sunday. God, you know God has a plan for everything in our life. And when we focus on the here and now and fail to thank God for the things that are happening in our life now, we're not looking and saying, oh, 
you know what? I don't like this situation. I really wish I didn't have to go through this situation. You know what? I know God's in control. God's in control. His plan is greater than my plan. Even if we can't see the end of it, God can. We allow the world to rob us of our joy. I, I, I kind of told my wife, I, I kid around with her a lot, but I, 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 you know, this, this part of this is actually, you know, semi true. I, I try to avoid listening to the news anymore. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit passionate about certain things. Let's just put it that way. That's a nice way of putting it. Um, not so nice way of putting it is there's certain things that I listen to that just make me angry. And you listen to the things that are going on in the world today, you, you listen to it long enough, and you can get really uptight. And we can develop a spirit of, oh, no, they won't. Or you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And we forget God is sovereign. God hasn't lost control of what's going on. God hasn't taken a vacation. He doesn't have an out to lunch sign up. He hasn't said, you know, you know, let, let, let's just see what happens for him. No, God knows what's going on, and he has a plan for all of this. We need to develop a spirit of thanking God no matter what's going on. And having the right perspective and not worrying it so much oftentimes about, listen, nobody wants to go through trials. But oftentimes, we allow the cares of this life to steal our praise and thanksgiving. We do. And God wants us to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Not just thanksgiving time, but all year, all the time. So thanksgiving requires a, a spirit of humility, a proper perspective. It requires faith. See, thanksgiving requires faith. You know, we know the story of George Mueller. And, you know, oftentimes we, you know, we hear the story, we hear about M George Mueller praying for food so that God would provide food. And, and listen, he did. He did that regularly. But I think sometimes there's a part of that story that we kind of, I don't want to say twist, we just kind of hear it sometimes told incorrectly. There was a time, now, now he did pray. Don't, don't get me wrong, he did pray for the food. But there was a time, one specific time, where George Mueller didn't have food. And he didn't actually, he probably prayed for the food, but he also prayed, and this is what he prayed. He said, Lord, I thank you for the food that we're going to have. He didn't pray for the food. He thanked God because he knew the food was coming. Amen. You know what that is? That's faith. Imagine thanking God for something he hasn't even given you yet. Because you believe that he's going to give it to you. Listen, it requires faith sometimes. Do you believe God's going to provide for you? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And so, listen, sometimes thanksgiving requires faith. Sometimes we need to step out and say, all right, Lord. This car is on its last legs. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ride it like they did in the Flintstones days. <laughs> Get out and push and hope it starts and jump in and away we go and hope we're going downhill. I don't know where we're going. But listen, God knows and God provides. Think about all the times in your life that God's provided for you. He won't stop. And the last point is this. The attitude of the direction of our praise, the attitude of thanksgiving, and finally the worship of our God. We worship God because of the character of God. And I'm just going to go quickly through this. You know a lot of these, and I don't want to spend too much time on all these, but God is unchanging. Isn't it great that when you read something about God in the Bible, it's true always, forever, and ever, and it never changes? He is holy. Because He's holy, He's worthy of our praise. He's righteous. His judgments are righteous judgments. He is just. You know, one of the things people talk about these days is fairness, equity. It seems like no matter, no matter which side you're on, nothing is fair. Well, listen, one day when we all stand before God, I can guarantee you one thing. It will be just. Amen. God is just. And his judgments are just. He's true. Dot, dot, dot. Always. He's good. All things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God is good. And there's so many more. Just that list alone gives us reason to praise and worship God and to be thankful for who he is. Listen, his judgments are unchanging. 
You read the Bible today, and you read that same verse tomorrow, you know what? The verse hasn't changed. Times change. Guess what? God hasn't. Amen. The seasons change. God's still the same. Politics change. God is still the same. The religious climate changes. God is still the same. The Christian changes. Ooh. Guess what? God is still the same. Letter B, our worship comes from the heart. You know, it, it, you can't put on a show. We might be able to put on a show for others, but we can't put on a show for God. Psalm 138, verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart. With my whole heart, he says. If you look back in Psalm 100, and some of the verses, some of the words it talks about, joyful, gladness, thanksgiving, praise, thankful, Boy, all those things, they're manifestations of what's in our heart. We can put on the show, but God knows our heart. John Piper said, genuine thankfulness is an act of the heart's affections, not an act of the lips' muscles. We can say whatever we want, but if it's not genuine, it's not true, it's not real worship, it's not real praise, it's not real thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes from the heart. And then the final, final point is, it's a, it, our worship is an outward manifestation. Listen, when we're thankful... It's going to do something in our life. It's going to motivate us to do something. Tim Keller said, it's one thing to be grateful. It's another thing to give thanks. Gratitude is what you feel. Thanksgiving is what you do. And when we have a spirit of thankfulness, and if you go back in Psalm 100, we don't really have time to go through it, but there's some things that it says to do. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We sing. We sing because we have a heart of praise. Listen, it doesn't matter what it sounds like. Just sing. Guy, person sitting next to you might argue that one, but sing anyway. Because if we have a heart of praise, listen, we've heard people say, I remember there was a guy that used to sing, and he had actually had a good voice. We used to go to a conference, and he was probably in his 70s, right? And he sang, and it wasn't how he sang, or the songs he sang, or the words he sang. That was part of it. But he had a joy on his face that when he sang, you knew. You just knew that man had the hand of God upon him, and he loved his Lord. He did. You could just see it. You say, well, how could you possibly know that? No one can really, but you could just see it coming out in the manifestation. Because when you're thankful for what God's done, man, you can't help but smile. You can't help but be joyful. You can't help but thank God for everything. We sing because of a heart of praise. We sing psalms. We sing hymns. We sing spiritual songs. Verse 2, it says, serve the Lord. When we are thankful, we serve God. We serve God. Not because we have to, because we get to. We don't serve God because he needs us, because God doesn't need us, but God desires for us to serve him, because guess what? When you serve, there's blessing. You say, well, yeah, but people aren't always nice to you. No. But there's still blessings. You get to see changed lives. You can't put a price tag on that. When you get a chance to lead someone to the Lord, is there any value that you can place on that? And you know what? <laughs> Nobody can take that joy away from you. I will never forget that VBS, and I've mentioned this before, but when those young boys, five, fifth grade, 10 years old, 11 years old, five of them wanted to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and they all did. Amen. One of them was in tears. Can you imagine a 10-year-old in tears because they had just gotten saved? Listen, I can see those boys, I can see his faith as if it happened yesterday. You never forget that. And as I'm, as I'm, as I'm thinking of it and remembering it, it, it still stirs my heart. That's a blessing. We sing, we serve, we bless his name. Listen, there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise him. Don't be afraid to, to, to praise Jesus Christ. Praise him. <clears throat> Praise and thanksgiving are a natural manifestation of our love for God. And it's a continual action. We can be thankful even in our trials. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Just remember God's in control. God is in control. <clears throat> let's be thankful today, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day. But let's be thankful always. We have so much to be thankful for as Christians. Salvation church family, friends, we have a great church, and, you know, I, I can't, you know, listen, we went around the room and started th thanking God for all the things we're thankful, we'd be here till Thursday, 
That's a good thing. That means we have a lot to be thankful for. Let's remember God in all we do this year, in all this week. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for, uh, Lord, your, your blessings. Thank you so much for your goodness. And, Lord, help us to have a spirit of, of, of thankfulness, gratitude, <coughs> Lord, all year round. In everything we do, let us remember the hand of God working in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please grab a prayer sheet, okay, and uh, just pray for these requests uh, this week. Uh, please remember these folks. Uh, you know, we have many that have some illnesses and things like that. Um, is there anything we need to add to the prayer sheet? Yes, sir, Tom. Wife's uh, salvation. Pray for Tom's wife's uh, salvation. Yes, Lord. My daughter passed and he had a severe fire in the house. She had a severe what? I'm sorry. Uh, fire. Okay. Fire. Fire. At her house. <coughs> um, they brought the entire garage burnt to the ground. Part of the house uh, is melted and smoke and all that, you know, but it's, it's very um, devastating for them in that, the, you know, there's so much, so many little things that they lost. Pray for Cassidy and their family. They had a fire in their house. Uh, the house was damaged. The garage burned down. And uh, just pray. Listen, it is devastating. And if you don't realize that it's more than just the structure. It's everything that, that's in there. Um, and so pray for them as they go through this, this difficulty and that God would just bless them as the hand of God would move and that they would see God moving yeah. and protecting them as well. Anybody else? Yes. Pray for Tammy's dad as he goes through the therapy and the pain associated with the therapy, and yeah. that uh, Lord, it would, it would just get easier right. uh, going forward, and the pain would be manageable. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? <coughs> yes, Daniel. I want to lift up that prayer for the guy on the news who was just let go on the trial, um, regardless of the stance of the the seventeen-year-old man. Oh yes, the, uh, the the yeah the young man who uh, was just on trial and got acquitted. Yes, I don't remember his name, but yes. I want to look up pray for salvation. Just pray for salvation. You know, we see all these things going on, and, and you know, we pray for one outcome, another outcome, but the reality of it is, you're right, we need to pray for the salvation. Because, when, you know, lives are changed in Christ, Amen. not Amen. politics or anything else. It's Christ that changed. And listen, it was Christ that changed my life, your life, and that's what's going to have the impact on people's lives. So but let's pray for this young man. And the, all those involved. Anybody else? Do you want to anybody else? Yes, Don. Uh, pray for my wife, Arlene. She had uh, knee surgery and there's been complications and she's really been struggling with it with the physical therapy and other factors. Okay, so pray for pray for Arlene, uh, the complications from the knee surgery she had. We'll continue to pray that hopefully things will start to move in the right direction for her. Anybody else? Yes, Haley. You said your aunt and uncle, right? Susan and Mark? Yep, they both had COVID. So you said that's great. Just pray for Susan and Mark and uh, her aunt and uncle. They both have COVID at this time. Yes. for show and Craig yeah, yeah. for their salvation. Yeah. And pray that God will continue to give you opportunities. You know, sometimes we don't see the fruit of those seeds we planted, <coughs> but you'd be surprised. Yeah. Remember when I got saved, it took a whole lot of seeds. <laughs> but only, only me there was one. I'm a, I'm a stubborn person, what can I tell you? Um, but yeah, pray for Cheryl and Craig uh, for their salvation. Anyone else? All right, God bless you for being here. Have a great Thanksgiving. Please be safe if you're traveling, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody back on Sunday morning. Amen? God bless you. Have a great day.